offer you recommendations on how to attain that perfect score of a thousand. So as we go through this, and you'll ultimately end up seeing uh, some of the suggestions that we have, we'll um, hopefully see that those suggestions or some of those suggestions are enacted next year, and so a new team of judges will come in and be able to see what was accomplished in, in that last year. And then next year, another set of fresh eyes will come in and make other suggestions. So it's a, it's a group effort. We're volunteers. Um, I, with my wife, have a landscape design business. I worked at the New York Botanical Garden for 18 years in horticulture and education. I also worked at the Bruce Museum as a curator of science. Uh, it also had a historical aspect. I worked in astronomy for five years. I worked for the National Park Service. I lived in Yellowstone National Park. I've traveled extensively, and so I see things from a... I, I look at the plants, and I understand your plants that are, are here are ones that will grow here, and I understand that if I'm in Florida, those are the plants that will grow there. So we're, we're looking at what you can accomplish, and we can see that you are really accomplishing a lot. You should be congratulated for what you're doing. So that's a little bit about myself. Patrick here, he'll introduce himself. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, my name is Patrick Bones. I come from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I have uh, three different college degrees. One is liberal arts. I'm a musician. I used to travel the country and play rock and roll. And then uh, went to school for a business administration degree. And then I worked in the corporate world for 18 years. And resigned and went back to school for horticulture, landscape design, and construction. So I have owned and operated my own landscape design build firm for the last 12 years, and I'm a much, much happier person doing what I do today. Um, I was asked to be a judge for America in Bloom earlier this year, and this is my first year, although Bruce has been doing it for seven years. So I'm somewhat his intern or apprentice this year. This is our fourth city this year. We have one more city to visit in July. And it's a rewarding experience to be able to travel, see the communities, see how the different departments and residences, municipalities, master gardeners, historical groups, whoever they are, learn to work together and create personal relationships to get to where they want to get to go in the American in Bloom project or program. Um, <clears throat> I'm also the only certified landscape designer in the state of Oklahoma by the Association of Professional Landscape Designers. Um, not real sure what else to tell. But, oh yes, that's right, I was president of APLD, which is an international organization uh, that covers 14 countries. There's 1,300 members. And I do serve on six other boards, uh, including Tulsa Historical Society Board and <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of advisory committees to a couple of universities and a community college. But I took this on because I knew that this would be a very educational opportunity for me to see what other people do in their cities and hopefully, as Bruce said, give recommendations as to what can be done to improve your community. And I might say that I think this is a very beautiful community and you're, you probably already know that you're very fortunate to live where you do live. So I'll finish on that, and thank you. I just wanted to mention something about the American Bloom Symposium and Awards Program that will be taking place in Columbus, Ohio on October 2nd through 4th this year. Uh, it's an awards ceremony and recognition program for all the people that have participated in the other cities, but it's also a program where people can go to Columbus and see all of the different parts of Columbus and learn and go to lectures. Uh, I'm just looking at it right here. You end up uh, a keynote presentation is environmental, environmentally beneficial landscaping, how gardens change the face of neighborhoods, developing backyard conservation programs, where do new plants come from and will they work, Recognize, recognizing your city's heritage potential. Uh, there was even one, uh, I can't see it right here, but it had to do with incarcerated people being put to work for the benefit of the community. So it's, it's an interesting uh, program and it's a good way to go see Columbus because we've got good tours going on and it's a good way to interact with other communities and learn from them some of the tricks they're doing 
in their areas and in their communities. So it's a good way. And some of you have gone to other symposia, and it, it it's a win-win situation. Everybody has a good time, and you get to meet people in other cities and find out how they cook good food like we just had here. But anyhow, thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Pat, very much. Uh, the reason they have one more city to go to, it's located in Minnesota and it's still under snow. That's why they're talking July. <laughs> but I tell you, I come from Minnesota, in case you didn't know that, and they may have a short season, but it's fast. It rains constantly, and they get a lot of sun, and things grow like crazy, but be prepared, be prepared for bugs. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for joining us today, and especially the Historical Society for planning all this. Kevin? Right. The other cities that are in competition, I, why don't you go ahead and do that, Bruce? The first city we visited already was Stewart, Florida, on the Atlantic coast. Then we flew to Collingwood, Colleyville, Texas, just outside of the Dallas-Fort Worth airport. We then went from there to Artesia, California, right outside of L.A., small community in California, flew home. Then we came here on, what's today? I don't know, remember. We came here Sunday. We came here Sunday. You lose track of time, really. And uh, we'll be leaving tomorrow morning. And then in July, we'll meet again up in Minneapolis area and go to Northfield, Minnesota. So this year, there are five cities in this same population category. And the same pair of judges go to the same population category so that we see sort of an equal setting and an equal place. Some, some uh, population categories can be as many as 14. I've done 14 cities in one year, and let me tell you, that's a lot of flying and a lot of report writing. Or they could be two or three. It depends on who enters each year. But people who participate usually participate again, and everybody seems to like the program. And it seems like you must because you're here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Any other questions from anybody in the audience? <coughs> No? You know, we've answered all your questions? Well, again, thank you all for being here. Uh, and I do encourage you. If, yes, Doug. Yes, that's a good idea. Our committee, <laughs> Karen Frank, and her husband, Tom, who's one of the great volunteers who helps us with all the drip systems. Uh, and of course, Kevin Rocha, park supervisor. Kristen Barnick, the Rogue Grandy Tree Guild. Jane Lyme with the South County Historical Society. Jim Bergman, there's Jim over there with tidiness. Mary Giambalvo, where's Mary? There she is right here. And Ron, Mary's in charge of environmental, <coughs> along with Carolyn Kelly, who couldn't be here. And Ron Kindig, where's Ron? There he is, way back there. Ron's in charge of landscaping. And we've got, in charge of our books, Linda Shepard, the, manual, the manuals which I just have over here, they've been passed around. They, take a look at the judges' manuals, if you will. They're absolutely incredible. That's one of the other things I appreciate about American Bloom. The necessity of preparing this judges' manual actually helps us to get a better overview and look at our community and an understanding of all that goes on throughout the whole community. It's an awareness that makes you feel very proud to be part of this community. And last but not least, Vivian Crew, <laughs> our photographer, official photographer. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Group Thanks. photos. Oh, Doug. Doug and Barbara. Doug and Barbara Lesage. And center Oh, the center arrangements were by Doug and Barbara Lesage. Thank you, Doug and Barbara. What's that? Carolyn and Ken. Oh, Carolyn and Ken. There they are. Those are two of our great volunteers, along with Ken Kitchen, Tom Goss. Who else am I missing? Who else is here? Anyhow, I wish more of our volunteers could be here, but this is a work day. And these are all the leisure time people right here, right? <laughs> <laughs> anything else? Have I forgotten anything? Probably. Again, thank you so much. The judges are going to spend a lot of time this afternoon report writing. If they need any more touring, they're going to give me a call. And I hope that you have a nice leisurely stay the rest of the time you're here and we're at your beck and call. Yes, Jane? Please tell everybody about the Tiedemann. Oh, of course. Thank you. 
The Tiedemans are again the host and hostess at the House of Another Time, the B&B up at the end of Mason Street at La Pointe, uh, where the judges are staying, and the judges did stay last year. It's quite a pleasant accommodation, I think. Yes, very nice. Thank you all again for coming. Have a great day.